feel like I'm gonna hurt myself. <laughs> this episode, we're digging into the delicious world of Italian stuffed pastas. There are at least a dozen varieties, including tortellini, tortelloni, capoletti, agnolotti, and of course the most common stuffed pasta, ravioli. Some historians believe ravioli stems from the word ria volgere, which means to rewrap or rewind. Pasta wrapped around a meat and cheese filling is some stick to your ribs, I don't speak diet, grandma cooking, and I'm always here for it. First, we're headed to Rosso Blue, where chef Steve Sampson and his wife Dina are going to show me how to make three filled pastas. Steve's family is from Bologna, and he describes his cooking at Rosso Blue as Nona or Grandma style. And in most cultures, special occasions means being around and eating with your family, right? right. Yeah. Definitely in Italian. Then we take a trip to one of Steve and Dina's favorite places for filled pasta, a restaurant called Pasta Sisters in Culver City. There, Chef Paolo DeRay shows us how to make her famous tortellini and ravioli. Would you ever fry them? No. <laughs> She's like, get out of my kitchen! <laughs> just asking, just asking. Step one. Step one, so we're gonna make the three shapes of stuffed pasta that we make here at Russell Blue. There's tortellini, mm -hmm. tortelloni, and the third one is actually kind of interesting. It's called sfoglia lorda or sfoja lorda. That's like dialect for in Romania. Basically a stuffed sheet that's folded over and then cut into little squares and eaten in brodo. So we'll, we'll make them all. So the first step we're gonna do is just to make the pasta. Okay. This is a double zero Italian flour. Put your finger like this, like, you know, the Italian? Yes, And just yes. turn it upside down, and then make, and make, a, a, well. make a well okay. in the middle of that. Pasta bologna is two ingredients, eggs and flour. So my nonna used, used to make pasta like this every morning, and she would- Every morning? Every single morning, she would wake up and roll out tagliatelle or tortelloni. You can kind of switch to this guy. <laughs> then you can just kind of cut it all in. And so now I'm just gonna kind of pull it all together. This is when your hands get kind of messy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to use my fingers to start to incorporate this. So you see how it's like kind of, it's not super smooth, but yeah. like see how I'm pushing in and it's, it's, it's kind of coming back out. Yeah. That's really close to what we want. Okay. And you always have to let it rest? You have to let it rest. So if I were to if I were to roll this out, it would like naturally just pull Spring back. Spring back, in. okay. Yeah. Okay, so there's our pasta. As you can see, also just by the look how see how much firm it is, it's mm -hmm. all like it's still tight. And even the color, the color kind of darkens as it sits. All right, so now we're gonna make the fillings for all three of our pastas. The easiest one is for the sfoglia lorda. So we'll do that one first. Stracchino cheese. It's almost like a tangy cream cheese. Of course, Parmigiano Reggiano grated. Three eggs. I'm gonna grate some nutmeg. All right, these go straight in? Straight in. Okay. And now we're gonna take a fork. Again, just Cheese, for... more cheese, that's cheese, eggs. cheese, and eggs. How's it gonna be bad? It's not gonna be it's, bad. This is it's not, not gonna be bad. <laughs> so that's one filling. Let's do our tortelloni filling now. Okay. This is Joya. I like Joya's ricotta. We're just gonna put some parm in there. We're gonna put one egg in there just to kind of help bind it together. Mm -hmm. gonna put a little salt in there. Okay, some freshly ground pepper. Nutmeg, of course. And the last thing we're gonna do is, this is a Swiss chard, and then this just gets mixed up. And then it's done. The kind of most famous of all Bolognese pastas is the tortellini. Every family has its own recipe. Mortadella, oh, equal yeah. parts pork, mm -hmm. mortadella, prosciutto, and equal Amazing. parts parm. That's it. Amazing. And then an egg. Mm -hmm. da -da -da -da. This is what you're left with. Nice. I I'm like a mid-level nonna. 
the way I roll pasta. Right You're a mid-level donut. I'm a mid-level okay. donut. Okay. So if I screw up, it's okay. please. You're going to get demoted to low-level donut. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not a nona. So You're not a nona? You're already okay. doing better than me. Don't worry. Okay. So a little flour. I want to make sure the board is kind of no little bits of anything that's going to tear your pasta. So the objective for this is for it to stay since we're going to fill it as more as wet as possible. So this motion right here, where I go like this, is basically stretching out the middle of it. So labor intensive. It yeah. really is. If I go like this, you can kind of see that the middle is oh, yeah. a little too thin okay. compared to the edges. So I'm, now I'm just doing it trying to even. I'm not putting pressure on it because I don't really want to do the middle too much anymore. I just mm -hmm. want to. Do you want it to be see through? Is that how yeah, thin you're, yeah. you want it to be? You okay. want it to be see through. Okay, here we go. Grab one. Okay. Fold it over. Fold it over like a wonton. Like a wonton. Okay. Kind of push okay. the pasta, then really pinch the edges. So it's. Yep. Then, <laughs> here's the interesting out. part. Yep. Take this guy. Okay. Fold it like this. Yes. And press. Press. This guy, fold it like this and press. Now you're like quadrupling it, right? Uh huh. It might be like this, honey? Yeah, that's good. Okay. a few other styles of dumplings right mm -hmm. they're saying everyone gathers around the table and you all fold together and mm -hmm. you all make it together right i even i mean i know lumpia is not the same but mm -hmm. it's the same we all yeah. like gather around and we all wrap lumpia together part of me thinks it's like yes it's nice that it's communal but yeah. part of me thinks that whoever masterminded this was like i don't want to have to do this <laughs> right right well it is a lot of work yeah you know, it is are... that's why they're so stay for special occasions right yeah, and in most family. cultures special occasions means being around and eating with your family right, right. Yeah. definitely in italian and why do you think there's such strong feelings about a specific way to do something that's just their yeah. culture mm -hmm. it's very interesting like you go there and it's like you go out you play with your friends when you're young everyone uh 12.45, stop, go home, <laughs> lunch, one o'clock, take a nap, four o'clock, go out, play, or go to work. <laughs> if you either go out to play with your kid or you go back to work if you're an adult, then boom, eight o'clock, stop, go back, <laughs> eat dinner, boom, meet again after dinner. Yeah. And it's not just one kid who does that, it's every single person. That's just the way they do things. Yeah. Right. That looks great. Really good. Don't they look not good? Bad, to let the pasta really shine, Steve serves his tortelloni with a super simple tomato sauce fortified with butter. It's rich and it coats the pasta without overwhelming the delicate flavors of the cheese inside. The tortellini are served in brodo, a traditional preparation where the pasta is served in hot broth. For this folia lorda, we decided to quickly toss the pasta in a simple sauce made with butter and cheese. And of course, we topped it with even more cheese to finish. So tell, so tell me more about this specific style in Brodo. This tortellini in Brodo is kind of like the iconic dish for Bologna. Mm -hmm. um, special occasion dish, but it's really, it's almost like if you're in Italy, Bologna is known as a food city everywhere in Italy. They say, oh, good food, good food. And if there's one dish that they'll bring up, it's probably this. Our stuffed pastas in general from a specific region or each region has like their own type of stuff yeah pasta. each region has its own stuffed pastas like if you like agnolotti is more of a piemonte nor farther north thing mm -hmm. canetterli is from like almost up in the alps as you get into southern italy and they don't really grow much uh, uh they grow more semolina wheat down there mm -hmm. And the pasta becomes just semolina and water and becomes more like what we associate with Italian dried pasta, spaghetti, penne, all mm -hmm. that stuff, uh, rigatoni. Uh, then you're, they don't do as much stuffed pastas, but they still do stuffed pastas. Like in Sicily, they'll do uh, like ravioli with ricotta. But the pasta down there is made with semolina. You know? Well, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to surprise you with something. Okay. okay. You can't look. 
I won't no. look. I'll keep my I'll keep my back turned. When you think of Italian American food, ravioli and red sauce is one of the first dishes that comes to mind. So I thought I'd make one of America's most iconic stuffed pasta dishes. Good old Chef Boyardee. Let's see. It's a food that played a major role in introducing Italian food to the U.S. in the late 1920s, and it says a lot about how Americanized certain Italian dishes have become over the years. I wanted to see what Steve and Dina thought of the canned version of his beloved ravioli, so I dumped the can into a pot, warmed it up, plated it beautifully, and served one of the country's most talented, celebrated Italian chefs a can of Chef Boyardee. Okay, Chef. Oh. Why not? What is it? Ravioli. Yeah, ravioli, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you make it? I did make I technically made it, yes. <laughs> I didn't grow up eating what most Americans grew up eating. I think it might be along that lines, right? Maybe. <laughs> so hesitant. <laughs> Are you dying? You don't oh have to God. finish it. You don't That's have to finish really it. Bad. <laughs> Do you know what it is now? I assume it's Chef Boyardee. Yes. Oh. I don't know if I've ever had it before, to be honest. What? You know what's funny? I grew up on it. As soon as I <laughs> you saw know. it, you knew what it was. I was like, oh my gosh. Why do you think uh, Italian food has been so Americanized? Like, why do you think there are so many, like, versions of right. traditional dishes like this, like, in a can? Well, I mean, I think Italians came over and just like in other areas, they became Americanized. And one thing about uh, the America, especially back then, uh, definitely people have to work more. Mm -hmm. less, less leisure time, less family time, less time to be at the table with your family. Then convenience comes in and not having to cook mm -hmm. and having everything in a can. And I don't know, like, how anyone could taste that and think it's good, but I mean, maybe some people liked it. I don't know. You liked it when you were. I good. did. Honestly, uh, it was like a, one of our treats was to eat this. Pinterest, like, yeah. I'm not a food snob in any way. Yeah. Like these guys know I eat everything, yeah. but like all I ate today was really, really good, fresh, yes. right? Fresh food, yes. but that that is um, that's rough. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Italian food's the only food that that happened to. I think it oh, yeah. happened to every cultural food. It's yeah. become yeah. simplified. Mm -hmm become easier, it's become maybe catered more to an American taste. Mm -hmm. It's just a different mentality and I do think like Americans are becoming more attuned to like fresher, better ingredients. You know, that's why every town has multiple farmers markets mm -hmm. and which is great. I mean I think it's really important to know where that food comes from. Same with meat, like you don't take an animal's life for granted, you know, it's like it's not you see a steak in the wrapped in a supermarket it came from an animal it's like it's yeah you know you got to understand that if you don't like it you shouldn't be eating meat like mm -hmm. you know you just shouldn't well i'm glad you didn't make that <laughs> that's why i didn't make it i was like i technically yeah. I, I i recognize them as soon as they went I, you know what gave it away that sauce yes the yeah. sauce the, like kind of ketchup -y whatever yeah. oh my well, but thank you so thank good. you for today yeah. Um, and for serving me better food than Chef Boyardee. <laughs> You're welcome. In Culver City, Pasta Sisters is not only a restaurant, but a marketplace where you can find everything you need to make a quick pasta dinner at home with a selection of fresh pastas and sauces made daily. Yeah. Chef Paola Duray, who runs the restaurant with her family, actually has a separate pasta kitchen on the second floor. It's a beautiful, light-filled room where she makes her ravioli and tortellini. So we start from the beginning. Okay, our pasta is made uh, just with eggs uh, mixed and oil, or extra virgin olive oil. And of course, the pasta flour that we use. And then we use the, this kind of machine, the uh, name is, fo is Fogliatrice. I don't know. Any. Cheater. <laughs> I'm glad that you have it. <laughs> because I don't know some, uh, some uh, words in English. So for the, for the um, ravioli, they are not, it is not too, it's not so thick. It's thin. Also, what is this contraption? I remember that at the beginning we were doing with the cup. Oh, God. Uh, it's my hand down. so long. And then we discovered this kind of instrument. Like, okay, That's amazing. It, this oh, is yeah, our. Yeah. Saves a yeah. lot of time. So what made you want to open a restaurant devoted to pasta? 
what happened here is that when I came here, of course, I had to find a job. My English was worse than now. <laughs> and um, I find a job uh, as a nanny in a family. They wanted the kids learn Italian. But when the kid, the, the, this girl, grown up, I started to cook for her. And uh, like uh, I found um, basil in the garden, so I prepared a pesto. I made the pesto for her. The, the parents came home at the night, and they taste the pesto. I said, how did you do that with your <laughs> basil? And they were like, really? So they started to ask me to cook for them. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then they asked me to make a dinner for 20 people for their oh, friends. Wow. So I started like that. And then the friends are, called me and asked me to make dinner for them. And then so it started like that. And because Francesco, my son, want to open a restaurant, I said, Mama, let's open a restaurant at this point. I started to make tortellini in Italy when I went uh, two years ago. Uh, and I went to, find, uh, to see a friend. She had um, a production of tortellini she makes by hand. So I said, can I help you with uh, your people that were working to make tortellini with them? And she said, yes, of course, go in. So I dressed up, I went inside of the fabric. I, mean, I meet these ladies and they said, hi, I'm Paola, can I help you? <laughs> When I came back, we started to make tortellini with them, and they become more faster than me. But we make a special just for Christmas because it's really, this is really intense. So what type of sauce do you serve the ravioli with? Okay, we suggest with uh, butter and sage or butter and cheese, but also with the tomato is good, and also with the rabbiata, a little spicy. And then uh, for the tortellini, we serve with butter and cheese, or uh, cream, just a light cream. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Is it good? Okay. <laughs> Oh, so, okay. Okay. I'll take it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm. so delicate, great. Mm. I love the sage. Mm -hmm. You fry the sage, it's like gives it a nice crunchy texture. Mm -hmm. I'm really taking the mm -hmm. I love the spinach. You mm -hmm. taste all the components separately. Exactly. And they work so well together. Yeah. yeah. Now I see. It's definitely a lot. Thicker, thicker around that, but I love how like chewy, mm -hmm. it's like the perfect, mm -hmm. perfect texture. Mm -hmm. Right? Or you just want to just do the, what's the hand signal? Is there a hand signal for really good? Is it this one? Oh, very good? Oh, that's like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <good>. okay. <laughs> Right there in that. <laughs> oh my God. That many tortellini. That's that a lot is, of work. That's not an order, is it? Yes, it is. Oh, that's oh a my lot God. of work. You must, do you charge a lot? You should charge a lot. <laughs> you should, you should, you should, you should charge a lot. a lot for that. So, what is in the sauce? This is just, mm. just cream? cream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're very flavorful, the tortellini, yeah. because there is the, the mm. cheese, oh there is God. the meat. I can taste the nutmeg. It's yeah. delicious. So every holiday, my mom would make tortellini. Mm -hmm. The first, she'd make tortellini and brodo, so and everyone's good. eat it in broth. And then the second course would be jalapeno with cream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is bringing me, bringing me home. Totally. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. Well, it's funny, you know, here in Los Angeles, it seems like everyone's always looking for flavor, One flavor, more. flavor, right? So something so simple like this, if you really pay attention, you can taste like everything. You yeah. know, and it's, there's no spice, there's no, you know, it's just very simple flavors. Yeah, I that you can it. like, and you can appreciate them because there's not like too much going exactly. on. Exactly. Sometimes there could be too much going on. Yeah. <laughs> These little <laughs> they're so tiny, <laughs> they're so tiny. Tortellini are I worth know. so so much <laughs> joy. The next time you see Paula at Pasta Sisters or visit Steve and Dina at Rosso Blue, make sure you stick your finger in your cheek, give it a little turn, and let them know that the pasta is very good. <laughs>